Well, good morning. Thanks so much for joining me here on THP 11 Plus. We've got a couple of rounds of severe weather that we need to talk about. Of course, it is March, and that means we're going to have to talk about these storms. They'll be a little more frequent, and of course, we want to make sure that we are not hyping up too much things for you. That is why you will see today is not a severe uh, weather impact day, but Friday will be, and we'll talk about why as well. And so looking forward here, uh, this is for today. We are looking for uh, this area here, southwestern Arkansas is really uh, the what the focus point is for today's storms. This is going to push in later tonight. Uh, now we don't want to dismiss this marginal risk that we have here for a good portion of the state because we could see some of that severe weather kind of push over a little bit. But here's a breakdown on the impacts that we could expect. Uh, we always cannot rule out an isolated tornado as any storm system pushes through. Um, sometimes it's a little more favorable than others, and this is one of those times that it's not necessarily favorable, but we can't rule it out. What we're really focusing on, you can see this hatched area up to two inches of hail is expected, uh, and we could see that in those areas. Now, as you're pushing a little bit more uh, to the east, you could see up to a quarter size. So I'm not going to rule that out for Central Arkansas soft and uh, for the eastern essential uh, southern portion as well. Now looking at those winds for that yellow could see around 60 miles per hour and as we're pushing a little bit more to the east again things are going to start to settle just a little bit. So keeping that in mind things will start to get a little bit better as the storm continues through the night. So the timing, as we talked about today, mostly we're going to have a day that is going to be a lot of sunshine. There's going to be a lot of uh, wind today as well. Uh, but then we're going to start to see those clouds push in tonight around six o'clock. And here is the bulk of what we are talking about. You can see that outlines really nicely with that area of yellow that we were talking about for the potential for hail. Now, as it continues to push eastward, we're looking for those storms to start to weaken. That's the great news there, but we're going to still see a little rainfall and we could see some embedded storms as well. And we could see a little uh, spark up here again. This is around 730 tomorrow morning, so this could be a situation where we could have a few of those storms pushing in as we're heading into the morning commute time. So keep that in mind, but then we're starting to clear out and that's the good news, but good news, bad news situation. We're going to see the clouds start to move out, but that's going to give you the sunshine. And you know what sunshine does in an unstable environment? It starts to fuel, gives a little bit more activity to any unstable air, unstable systems that are in our vicinity. And that is what this is doing for your Thursday. So that's kind of setting things up a little bit more for Friday's weather is too. It's keeping the atmosphere prime, uh, not letting it weaken a little bit as we start to see that next system push in for Friday. And that's one of the reasons it's a little bit more severe and a little more impactful um, as we're heading into Friday. And it's we're expecting a lot more from that system than we are the current one today. So a lot of weather jargon speak, but again, that is what we are talking about. And I wanted to explain exactly why we didn't have one today. 
and we will have one on Friday. I think that's important to understand. So Friday, let's talk about it. That weather impact alert has been issued. Uh, we are going to talk about that as we are heading into the afternoon and nighttime hours. Severe storms are possible. Uh, we could see mainly damaging winds are what we are expecting, but the potential for tornadoes is certainly there. Uh, we are looking to make sure you stay informed and have multiple ways to receive information. If the power goes out by chance, uh, we're going to have to make sure your phones are charged. So do that before the storm arrives. Uh, make sure even the iPads and the uh, the phones, anything that you can charge up to make sure you have adequate ways to receive information. Uh, we're going to start to see these again more often as we're heading into the spring season. So looking ahead as well, this is what we're expecting for Friday. You can see a bigger risk area. We have the Storm Prediction Center putting a lot of eastern Arkansas in this enhanced area, that three out of five. And they did this several days ago. So the forecast has evolved just a little bit, but it is still there the dynamics are there uh, and as you move a little more west you see we're in that yellow most of central Arkansas as a whole from north to south is in that slight category and then marginal just a little bit now western Arkansas might not see anything from this at all we could see this really develop more in central Arkansas and then continue to evolve as it's moving east so that is something we are keeping in mind and we're all going to be here uh, tracking this just to keep you updated so one thing to talk about if you'll remember uh, week ago, I think it was when we had those winds that it was actually after the storm. We had some gusts that were 50, 60 mile an hour winds and that was outside of the storm. It was a beautiful day and it was those crazy winds. Well, these winds are going to be before the storm this time. Uh, we're going to look for gusty winds on Friday around noon and you can see it's 20 to 25 and then they really start to pick up as you're heading into the afternoon. This is around 430 and if you'll take a look up there in Fayetteville, they are projected to have over 50 mile an hour gust in central Arkansas. We're looking at just shy of 40. Uh, Stuttgart looking at 45. Again, looking for these areas to really be breezy. Hot Springs close to 40. And that's around 430 in the afternoon and the storm hasn't gotten here yet. So that's starting to uh, to get just a little bit uh, more breezy as we're heading into the afternoon hours as well. We're starting to see things get a little bit more breezy, but push it more towards the east. And so that's something we're going to keep in mind. But you're still seeing those gusty winds at 11 o'clock at night. And again, this is when the storms are starting to pick up and uh, that could be more of an overnight event. So that's something to keep in mind. Now the storm impacts for Friday. Let's talk about it. Damaging winds, um, more of a higher risk there. That larger hail is certainly possible and we certainly can't rule out that tornado risk as we're heading in and that long range just kind of timing things out a little bit. Again, we're looking for this to start to develop in northern Arkansas first around 1030, but then it's going to continue to intensify. And as we're looking through the overnight hours again, things are going to start to pick up and it's going to be overnight. So make sure you have a way to wake yourself up uh, because we're still watching the system. Will it be a line? Will it be more of a cluster of storms? It's still evolving, unfortunately. So we're going to keep that uh, updating and as we get more information. But the next 24 hours, I think we're going to know a little bit more about what we're expecting. But things are looking good out there right now. Again, 54 degrees in central Arkansas and we're looking for that high in central Arkansas again today in the upper 70s. Uh, but I want to talk a little bit also about the Cape, uh, especially as we're heading into Friday. So I'm going to back up here for just a second and find my graphics that I need. Uh, we're going to be streaming on and off throughout the week. Um, I'm going to be here every morning at 7 a.m. and talking about this uh, storm and what we're expecting, especially for Friday, because I think the storm on Friday can certainly be a little more impactful, uh, especially for central and especially eastern Arkansas. And last time we talked about these storms, the storms had all the wind shear. You remember that we were talking about, but we didn't have the cape. We didn't have the fuel. And uh, we also talked about that one could overcompensate for the other. Well, this time we have both. And so that's why we're really focusing on this storm. All of that is coming together. It's all coming in line with the storms. The timing is on top of each other and keeping that going. So again, that's something we're really going to have to watch as we're heading into, especially the nighttime hours. The darker this orange, again, um, as it is heading into these darker colors, the more cape, the more fuel we have. And this is what we are looking at that situation. So not looking for an outbreak by any means, certainly not scaring you, just more of these storms 
storms will be impactful. They'll be a little stronger. We're talking about those crazy gusty winds. So we know wind can do a lot even outside of a tornado. So that's something just to keep in mind. So make sure you're uh, tying things down, moving things around just to make sure your neighbor doesn't end up with it or your trampoline doesn't end up down the road. That's really going to be the primary factor is the winds and it really stays right here. You'll see where that enhanced area that cape is really strong. The wind shear is there. The storms are there. It's all coming together around that time again. Don't be nervous. Download that Teach V11 app and you'll have everything you need. You'll get all the latest watches and warnings, um, which is something we need to talk about as well and as continue into the morning time. So the storm fuel is there and that's one of the items that we're really focusing on as well and just watching how that evolves. Um, but again, we are having those areas of two systems pushing through one today and one Friday. And I wanted to discuss one more time here. Let's talk about um, since it is the beginning of the uh, severe weather season. Let's talk a little bit about um, watches and warnings because even myself, uh, you get out of the habit of it. And you're like, what is a watch? What is a warning? Which one is more important? <laughs> and which one should you really pay attention to? Well, the truth is you should pay attention to both of them, but a watch covers a large area. So if we do put out a watch, we're like, well, things are favorable uh, covering a large area. Things may or may not happen, um, but it's looking like it might. And we want to make sure you have an adequate time to be safe just in case a warning that is one that we really need to pay attention to. That means it only covers one or maybe a few more counties and you'll see things am starting to uh, intensify and getting a little bit more strong. And that means it's time to take action, whether it's a severe thunderstorm, we are talking tornadoes, we're talking all of that, whatever that warning is, it's time to take action to protect against that. So uh, it's expected and it will most likely happen. The conditions are favorable for that. So it is certainly one thing that you need to make sure you kind of keep a watch on. And I know this may sound a little crazy, but even print out something that shows you can Google real quick and find something that shows the difference between a watch and a warning and put it on the fridge. Uh, one of those things about preparing for uh, severe weather season is just making it more of a routine. If you have to react every time um, and you don't have a plan, then that makes things a little bit more chaotic. So I suggest as well, even with the kiddos, pack a little bag uh, that you have and when you, everyone knows where they go for these types of systems as they push in and no one gets a little nervous because you know exactly what needs to happen. And I think that's important for us adults and for the kids too. Everyone remains calm. You've got all of your uh, flashlights. You've got something for the kids to do uh, and just something to kind of keep you busy while you're staying safe, uh, you know, in your hidey hole or if you need to make sure you're just taking care of your property. So again, let's talk about storm safety since we do have the potential for some isolated tornadoes on Friday. I'll we'll talk about that safety. Uh, best options, of course, is a storm shelter. Not a lot of people have those. I know I don't, so I'm looking for an interior closet. I'm also looking for an interior bathroom or a hallway or pantry. Uh, as we're looking at the, the timing coming in for the worst options, uh, well, make sure if you live in a mobile home, find a friend that you can go stay with for a little while and use their uh, home if you can. If you live in an apartment, the upper floor, it would be great if you could come down just a little bit. Those upper floors are a little bit more dangerous, but stay away from any rooms with windows. Uh, as you know, those winds will blow everything and it's a bit chaotic and more uh, more chances of getting hurt there. And then also those rooms with exterior walls. Always try to find something where you're just kind of surrounded by walls. Anything you have, the more you have uh, to kind of protect you from the outside elements, even better. So keeping that in mind, it's just a little tip there, but I wanna talk one more time about today as we are heading into the next little uh, system. All right, so we have a viewer asking a question they should cancel tonight plans. So I think it's just the timing on that. We could see some of these rain showers begin a little earlier, but I don't think the stronger storms will be here until much later. Um, so again, just keeping that in mind, it's gonna be a bit breezy today. We're gonna see those clouds, but you may see a few little showers early, but talking about that hour by hour forecast, I'll pull that up. That's always a really good one to kind of give a reference on things. Um, pull it up, here it goes. So this begins at one o'clock this afternoon. You can see it's a bit breezy out of the southwest. So it's going to be gusty, gusting 20 to 25. The clouds start to roll in around seven, eight o'clock, but we're not really expecting a whole lot of rain. Doesn't mean you won't see any, but a whole lot of rain until around 11, 10, 11 tonight. So I think if you have plans tonight, probably OK to do that. Just stay aware in case these systems speed up a little bit. Um, but again, I think tonight you'll be OK. Just take that umbrella just in case. Uh, but again, I want you to stay safe. And remember, we are looking for these potential severe threats for tonight, uh, mainly looking at that hatched area right here 
for that up to two inches of hail that is possible uh, as it's moving a little bit more to the east. It's going to start to weaken, which is great news, but also another threat with this is going to be these winds again in this yellow area. Those counties that are uh, more in the southwestern and south portion and as it moves eastward again, it's getting a little bit better, but an isolated tornado cannot be ruled out. But now is the time to make that plan. We've got a beautiful day to talk about it and even the early evening as well. So stay safe and I really appreciate you joining me for this THV 11 plus and we're going to do this again on Friday morning and we'll know exactly what we are expecting throughout that day for that more uh, severe system that is pushing into the state. So again, I appreciate you so much and I can't wait to see you tomorrow morning. Thanks again.